code is all around us and there are so many different applications and skills that go along with being able to write code in such a wide variety. But first let's talk about what code actually is. Code is a computing language and there's more than one just like we have more than one spoken language across various countries and these languages are all used to create commands and actions that a computer program can interpret. So basically there are so many different applications across websites or animations or video games, robotics, applications, and anything that really you interact with that has to do with a computer had some type of code involved to make that happen. And you, if you're writing code, are the programmer. And the role of the programmer is to go ahead and kind of recreate your thoughts and actions into this syntax that a computer can interpret. Now syntax, or the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language, applies not only to written languages, but code as well. So you may have heard of syntax in your English or language arts classes. And we're going to practice right now how to think in a code like syntax, just like a computer programmer. So here's a sentence. Planes fly very high up, typically at 40,000 feet. If a plane flies higher than 50,000 feet, it should fly back down to 40,000 feet. Pretty simple. Now this is not something that a computer can necessarily interpret right away. This is a sentence written for us humans to understand. If we were to simplify this and find the main point, it would be something like if a plane flies higher than 50,000 feet, it should go back down to 40,000 feet. And again, this is really written for us, not a computer at this point. Now if I were to try to recreate the main point, no point in trying to remake the original statement because that had a lot of language terms that aren't really relevant to the the key point here. But if we were to look at the main point in the bottom left, and if I were to try to recreate it using any of the words in the word bank shown on the right, that would kind of be writing code, something that a computer could understand. A lot of code is necessarily using words that you've heard of, like if, else, and, greater than, things that maybe you've heard in math class or your other classes. But these are terms that many computers can interpret when written in correct syntax. So if I were to go ahead and rewrite this using those vocab words, it would be something like this. And now I want to point out that sprite is just a common word used for an object or a variable or a thing. So if sprite y greater than 50,000, then change y by minus 10,000. Now notice that I used the y variable because of course in math y is up and down on any type of coordinate plane and x would be the left and right horizontal axis. And if I were to go ahead and just highlight some of these words into groups, you'll notice that words that are kind of controlling words, so like an if or a then, almost conditions, uh, are in yellow. Greater than, this is kind of like an operator, right? Y, these are sort of motions, something to do with moving the position of the uh, sprite. And of course, sprite is in red here to show that it's an object. And then numbers are kind of left in a white text. These are things that we can type in here. What I've done is I've essentially created a code statement, something that a computer might actually be able to interpret. And I've broken this down into different categories of commands. And if I were to go a step further and actually write this in a code syntax, such as Scratch, it would look something like this. And this is something that Scratch would actually be able to control. And if there were a plane on my screen in my Scratch program, it would in fact go down 10,000 units every time it went above 50,000 units. Now there are countless different programming applications you should look into. Each one has a specific task. So if you're looking for video games, there's specific languages for that. Apps, even for iPhone and Android, there's separate languages. Um, there's general languages like processing. They kind of give you a taste of a little bit of everything. Arduino and Python and Raspberry Pi are all great for electronics. Of course, there's Lego Mindstorms for controlling the Mindstorm robots. And really the list just goes on and on and on. So try to, if you're, if you're not sure, where you want to go. Just try any of them, really, just to see how you like it. And if there's a specific task you want to complete, like web development or video game, really look into languages that are meant for that task.